The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the July 1st, the marvelous Monday edition of today's Trader Z Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that, it's to always remember that life is happening for us not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this. During this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial in at 877-927-6648. Now, if you've got a question but you can't call in, I've got your back. Send me an email. Send it off to steve at tfnn.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Magical Marvelous Monday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, we got a mixed bag out there. you got the Dow that's turned slightly positive, up nine points. NASDAQ Composite is up 13. The other indices are trading the downside. The S&P is off five. NASDAQ 120. Russell's down 15. Semi's down 67. Trenders are off 91 points. Gold's back four bucks. Silver's up a uh, penny right now. Lights Recruit is up 76 cents. Natural gas is off nine pennies. 30-year Treasury is off two points and four ticks. So you print out at 116.06. Now, our leaders in the clubhouse to the upside Alpha Metallurgical Resources up 43 bucks, $15, 15%, I should say. MicroStrategy, 21 bucks, 1.5%. Arch Resources, 12 bucks, 8%. The Bank of Montreal is up 13 bucks, nearly 3%. Regenerate Pharmaceuticals, a move of 1%. That's a $10 move. To the downside, it's Mercado Libre up 69. Buckaroon is a 4% move there. O'Reilly Automotive down 36 or 3%. Decker's Outdoor, 31, 3%. Domino's Pizza, 50, $16, 3%. And Lamb Research is off 18 bucks, about 1 in 7 tenths percent. So we got movers and we've got shakers. But where are we going to begin our day? I'll tell you where we're going to begin our day real quickly here. Let's take a look at New York Stock Exchange, advanced decline oscillator. It got up towards that zero threshold level. It did not get above it, did not close above it. It still remains where in the below that zero threshold level tells us that sellers are the ones that are in control of the general markets. If we take what that wasn't what I was going to put up, I was going to put this up here. And that is the spot volatility. That's on the uh, lower left hand side out there. The spot VIX is trading right now at uh, 1306. The 50 day exponential moving average is 1320. If price were to move above 1320, close above, not move above, close above 1320, then that would be giving sellers the edge there too. And if we do that, then we're likely to see price move back to support for the equity future contracts. So where's support in the equity future contracts? That's an excellent question. For that, we're going to go ahead and switch over to our white background screens because it's those profiles that I believe are the more correct profiles in this instance. What the heck? Oh, there we go. Okay. Just got to hit the right buttons and it'll take us over there. No, we're not going to take a look at John Deere just yet, but we will. So that's coming up. That was a tease. If we take a look at the ES Mini upper left hand side, where's the real level of support? Now you can see on Friday, we had a Rosemont indicator signal that was triggered, but we already had a TD9 count top. And that was at 55.61. That was its threshold area. We never got a close above that. So you got two tops inside the ES Mini. Does that make it better than one top? No. Or three tops? No. Or four tops? No. It's just simply topping signals. So we do know that uh, sellers are trying to protect that 55.69 level, 55.69 being the top of that daily profile. The bottom of the profile, 
5493. If price were to close below that for two consecutive sessions, then 5324 would become its target. Now that's irrespective of knowing where we are in weekly profiles. We're just taking a look at the daily right now, but that would be the daily target. There may be other support that is above that 5324. In the case of the NQ, it also formed a Rhodes Mintum indicator top on Friday. Does that matter? No, because it already had a TD9 count top at the 2271 level. Price here has support at 19802. We did see one day's close below that. You know, Stevie has this two bar rule, two consecutive bars below support or two consecutive bars above resistance. We can see that that was a one hit wonder, that that was a false move to the downside because the very next trading session, price got back inside the profile. Watch 19802. If we did get two consecutive close below that, then we'd be looking to move back to the uh, 18941 level. Again, that's irrespective of taking a look at the weekly charts out there. It's oscillator and change line, so on and so forth. Now, we take a look at the Dow Equity Future Contract. The Dow Equity Future Contract does not have an A to B equal CD pattern. The reason it doesn't is because this uh, Pammer candle that formed out here at the bottom of its profile on June 14th, that retracement there was like 80 plus percent. So once we get above 0.786, it really starts to read. It really becomes more of a consolidation-oriented signal. Uh, but right now, what we've got is price is still trading with inside its profile. Resistance is very clear. On Friday, that was tested at 39,739. But support is also tested or, or held. And that right now is the oscillator and change line. We've been above that. It's been tested for the last about four or five trading sessions, it being, as we speak right now, the level of 39,463. If price did close below that, that would be suggesting to you and I that we head down to 39.090. That's the bottom of its daily profile. And now to the Russell 2000. The Russell 2000 has a buy the D point pattern. On Friday, what we saw price do is move up to the level where a counter trend move, this would be a counter trend move suggesting that price still has pressure to the downside where it would find resistance. And that is between 2082.30 and 20.90. Why is that the resistance level? Because that was a bullish structured profile. And once we close below that for two consecutive sessions, counter trend moves tend to find resistance in that zone. If price were to close above 2090, then we'd be looking at a move up to the 2152 level. So you still have a buy the D point pattern. Price right now is holding support and support is that oscillator and change line. So we're kind of trading in, in, a, in a version of a sideways market between support and resistance. Again, Support at that oscillator and change line, resistance up at that 2090 level out there. So that's what's going on. We take a look at the daily equity future contracts. Well, let's not stop there, Steve-O. Let's go see what's going on on those intraday charts. So let's begin by taking a look at the NQ. So what do we know about it? Well, the one thing we know about it is if you look at that two-hour time frame chart, price has broken through its TD9 count breakout level. So we're just simply going to start here. We'll go take a look at those roads meant to indicator signals on the shorter term time frame. But maybe this is really suggesting to you and I that what price wants to do is get back to test the lows from about six o'clock in the morning back on June the 25th. We can see that this 1933 level has been tested several times. It is always held. That was until about 10 o'clock. Now, same rule is going to apply here. This is at 12 noon when we're getting off the air. If price is back above 19,933.50, then this becomes a one-hit wonder, a one-hit wonder to the downside as a false breakdown. Well, what do we have out here as bottom patterns? Well, we take a look at the 30-minute time frame chart. What we have out there is that Rhodes momentum indicator pattern. That requires price moving lower, doing thrust a lot of energy. It needs a certain number of days. It's a number of different things that I teach folks. You can just subscribe to Mastering Probability. Shoot, if you subscribe to it for 29 days, it doesn't cost you anything. And to get an education of a lifetime. Here we can see that Rhodes momentum indicator signal, bottom pattern that was confirmed. And now what price is trying to do is get above the center of its bullish structured profile. And that's at 19,936 is a 30-minute uh, chart. If at 11.30, price closes above uh, 19,936, that tells us it should go target resistance. Resistance at 19,995. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? 
one simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening Call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. So before I move off of the NQ charts out there, we took a look at the intraday. There was a question posed inside the Tiger's Den by uh, Mr. Z, uh, John in uh, Philly. And his question is, uh, you know, is there anything that my charts show uh, with regard to this shortened holiday trading week, with regard to with regard to the NASDAQ? Uh, what else was it? Uh, let me try to move this. The NASDAQ, uh, the 30-year Treasury, gold, and light speed crude. So we'll take a look at uh, each of those, John. But you're asking about the NQ out here right now, and those are the charts that we're on. So I'll kind of do that as I go back and forth with regard to instruments out there. So with regard to the NQ, as long as price is able to stay above 19802, the bottom of that daily profile on the white background charts out there, and I mean for two consecutive sessions, stay as long as it stays above that. Doesn't, in other words, it doesn't close below that for two consecutive sessions. Don't worry, I'll get my uh, my gr grammatical. Uh, um, well, we'll just skip the grammatical thing. Let's just call it a. You're just going to have to listen to me talk the way I talk. But in this case here, 19802 is the number. If price were to close below that, John, for two consecutive sessions, well, that would mean today and tomorrow, and then we'd be dealing with Wednesday. I'd say that then the sell-off would continue. But if it doesn't, we're really in kind of a consolidation out there, consolidation with the price trading between the 19802 and the oscillator and change line, which we'll just right now, we'll just call it 2143. So that's what I see when I take a look at the NQ, nothing more than that. If we're to take a look at consecutive days, the dance steps, so to speak, let's pull that daily time frame chart over, see what we see here. And what we see here is we see three days to the downside, three days to the upside. Friday was day one to the downside. Would expect today to perhaps be a down move out there and then a rally for a couple of days. Again, nothing that's going to break the consolidation pattern with inside those profiles, at least not just yet, that I'm able to see. Of course, you know, that could change. And we see the spot volatility is close above its 50-day exponential moving average. And that would be one thing to take a look at. So that's my answer to you with regard to the NQ. We'll take a look at uh, uh, Lights We Crude. And uh, I'll remember to take a look at the 30-year as well as the uh, gold contract out there. So let me just kind of note that, ZB, and let's move on. Um, 
And, and Vic, in fact, let, let's move on by taking a look at um, a couple of those. Let's take a look at natural gas. I mentioned when I did the 11 o'clock update that price was trading below profile support, but I thought that maybe it was trading right around its TD9 count breakout level. So now we take a look at those natural gas charts out there. I was wrong. It's trading around it, but it's trading underneath it. And underneath it, it being 2.524. That is uh, the daily chart for natural gas. Now, you can see an A to B equals CD pattern. We're beyond the one-to-one -one level out there. Again, that's why you don't just sell or buy a one-to-one -one A to B equal. I mean, you can do whatever you want. My suggestion is wait for a bullish or bearish reversal candle so that you know you at least have the cavalry at your back out here. So where is this going to head to? I would say the price target is at 244. However, if you look at that weekly chart, the weekly chart shows a support zone because it's a bullish structured profile. And so, John, that support zone, well, you didn't ask about natural gas, but anybody that is asking about natural gas, that support zone is between 244 and 252. So my presumption is price would go target 244. What happens if it closes below 244? Then we've got 234, and 234 is coming off of the monthly time frame chart, and that's the bottom of its profile. Now, if you were to see a bullish reversal candle, I don't know what the seasonal looks like on natural gas. Why don't we take a quick peek at it? But if a bullish reversal candle forms between now and then, then being those lower support areas, then you've got a buy the D point pattern. So let's see what we've got out here for natural gas. By the way, John, I had looked up to see if so one of the cool things about the season X is they allow you to select a bunch of different events out here. And so the question was, hey, about coming into this short July 4th weekend, I said, you know what? I know they've got holidays out there. So when I checked all their holidays, and these, are, these guys are from, uh, from uh, Europe. They're over in Germany, I believe. And you can see uh, those are miscellaneous. Let me get up to holidays again. You can see we've got New Year's. We've got Martin Luther King's Day, Republic Day in India, the Chinese New Year. Uh, the Orthodox Easter, the Western Easter, Labor Day, Memorial Day, Labor Day. We don't have uh, July 4th. I guess they don't really consider that over in Europe really a holiday. Wink, wink out there. So I don't have that for us to be able to take a look at. But what we can do, though, is let's go see if uh, what the patterns are here for natural gas. So let me get back to the seasonal seasonality. And now let's go find uh, natural gas, popular instruments. It's got to be here. Uh, the natural gas. So. We've got a total of 33 years worth of date out here, and we are in the unfavorable cycle. In fact, uh, other than November, December, January, and February, which are basically disgusting, historically speaking, for natural gas, we've just re-entered an unfavorable time period. We really did it in June, so we know that natural gas topped in June, and uh, July is even worse out there. So I'd say be careful on natural gas, but nonetheless, if you are inclined to try to take a trade, what you want to wait for is at least a bullish reversal candle on the daily time frame to confirm a buy the D point pattern. Um, so let's go take a look. Let me just shut that down, get rid of those resources, and then let's go take a look at Lightspeed Crude. Lightspeed Crude, if you caught the 11 a.m. opening, I had mentioned that it looks like Lightspeed Crude is trying to negate its daily TD9 count top. So let's open up that chart. And here we go. You can see the TD9 count top went ahead and completed on June 21st. That high has been its key threshold level, that being 81.79. 81.90 was the top of the profile. We're above both those things. We're above green oscillator and change line. You asked me about light speed crew, John. That was one of your questions. You get a close today above 81.90. Uh, certainly, if you get a close above yesterday, a uh, Friday's high out there, and Friday's high is 82.72. Lights Recruit is headed back to its most recent highs from April. Now, the range, the bottom of that range, isn't that much further from where we're trading. That's at 83.27 out there, but the top of that range, or the high of that bar, I should say, is at 85.27. Now, that's the daily time frame chart. It looks like we get a negated TD9 count top. If we look at the weekly chart, the weekly chart shows that prices trade above its bullish structured weekly profile. That suggests that we move up to 85.27. So 85.27 is a definite target. However, before it can get up there, what price has to do for the August contract is deal with the resistance level for its monthly time frame. And that's at 83.11. So what's Stevie's call? 83.11 is pretty much baked in. 
If you close above 83.11, then we head to 85.27. So I'd watch those numbers and see if those areas fail. And then Light Street Crude been signaling to you and I that price should continue to move higher. Now, Light Street Crude has been, and you don't need me to tell you this, but I'm going to go ahead and tell you this anyways. It has been super strong off of its most recent lows, the one from June the 5th out there. When you say really strong, what do you mean, Stevie? Well, what I mean out there is basically we've only had one day pullbacks out there. This one that's written out here was a Friday. It still lists as number one because when this I've got it set to on bar close, and basically that'll go away come uh, tomorrow when I open this back up. So you have a this is telling us about a very strong upward momentum of compared to, for example, when Light Street Crew was coming off of a bottom back in February. There we had the normal dance steps, the Texas two step of dancing back and forth out there. Um, so uh, so I'd say Light Street Crew is looking pretty darn good as we speak right now and likely to rally into the uh, July 4th holiday out there. Uh, so let me close out those charts. When we come back from a break, we're going to go to break here in just a few minutes. We're going to take a look at ticker symbol HLGN for VIC, NICE for VIC, John Deere for Snowball, and then we'll also pull up those gold contract charts, see if there's really any signals there. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. report as a precious metal gold is still king it continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the london otc market the u.s futures market and the shanghai gold exchange the gold report tom o'brien publishes his weekly gold report every monday morning for subscribers consisting of coverage of the xau hui gdx the dollar bonds the south african rand as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at tfnn.com. Consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento Live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels. You'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns. You'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry Pesavento on Friday, June 14th and Friday, June 28th this month for his live trading sessions, where you'll sit right beside him as he trades the market live. For this month only, enter code LarryJune24 and save $50 off your first month. For all the information and to reserve your spot today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey, because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. This portion of the Trader's Edge is brought to you by Direction's Daily Leveraged and Inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com.
Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Welcome back, folks. So I've got the charts for HLG. Yeah, that is, uh, I'm not even going to try to pronounce it. Heliogen? Yeah, that's probably not even close. What an interesting set of charts this is. I don't know if this was a reverse merger or something like that. The reason is you don't see it on this chart right now, but it says that this traded up to $575, and it's basically a penny stock, at least a dollar stock. Not today, though. Right now it's trading out at $284. you have got an A to B equals CD pattern that is underway. The B point, which had a volume of uh, 10,000 shares, so we've got a very illiquid stock out there, 10,000 shares on May 24th. It was passed on uh, Friday with 57,000 shares. And that's a high volume day uh, for this instrument out there, 57,000 shares. So where this is headed to, I know you've got the call options on this, I believe it was, Vic. Um, I don't see any kind of a, a top on the daily time frame. It's getting close to that one-to-one -one price projection area. But that does not mean that's where price is going to stop. You know, that would suggest only that if you were to get a a um, bearish reversal candle, then you would want to consider perhaps uh, closing out those options. But right now, this looks like it wants to continue to move higher. We'll see if we can find anything out there that would suggest otherwise. But the daily says I'm moving higher. The weekly says the same thing. Last week, price closed above the top of its profile. That's at a buck eighty-seven out there. So everything here looks uh, good. See that weekly chart or monthly chart? You know, here's where it's going to show you trading all the way up to five fifty. I doubt that's what really took place out there. I'm thinking this was probably some type of uh, some type of merger issues that they've got out there, reverse merger, something along those lines. In any event, out here, um, so it looks like it wants to head higher. If there's is there some area of concern that Stevie can find out here? Not necessarily, but let's look at the 130-minute uh, time frame chart. Uh, so Stevie, when it comes to intraday patterns, I look at 15 and 30. I want to take a look at an instrument like a uh, like a stock. Because the stock is basically only trading for six and a half hours. So what we've got to find out there are equal time frames. Well, 30 minutes, that becomes easy. But it's not a 60-minute chart. It's got to be 65 minutes to have equally timed bars out there. And that also means we've got 330-minute bars for a 390-minute session. That's why we've got that up there. So it turns out that on that 130-minute time frame chart, you had a, a TD9 count top that completed... Uh, basically at uh, 4 o'clock on Friday afternoon. And price right now is taking on the high of that TD9 count top. And this is the area here, Vic, that you want to watch. That high is at 286. If price closes above that high, it tells you on a 130-minute time frame chart, you've got a strong move to the upside out there, which we already know it's a pretty strong move, but certainly taking that out would be something you're looking for. Turns out on the 65-minute chart, it was a Rhodes Mentum indicator top that form, but price never broke through any key levels of support. So again, that high gets taken out. Its 65-minute topping pattern will fade off in the distance. Finally, if we take a quick peek at that 30-minute chart out there, 30-minute chart has a Rhodes Mentum indicator top. And here, too, if price closes above 286, you're off to the races. So watch for a close above that 286 level. If you get that, that's simply just the confirmation that this thing wants to add higher. And, of course, just be on the lookout then for any type of bearish reversal candle for the daily time frame because that would then form a sell the D point pattern. Let's move on to your second request out there, Vic, and that was a take look at NICE. That's very nice of you to ask for that. So now when we see nice, what is this actually doing? Well, you have a, what do you have? So this actually formed, let me just open up the daily just to make sure, but I'm pretty sure. And I'm pretty sure that this did go ahead and no, it did not. That's why I opened it up. So I don't have a bottoming pattern out here. What I have is a consolidation with inside profiles on the daily time frame. And that ranges, oh, 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 there's a new profile. I take that back. Price, uh, there's a new profile that formed on Friday. And the new profile was below price. So first, where is support? Support would be the top of that profile, 167.50. Where's resistance? 
because price traded above the top of the profile. Resistance right now is this TD9 count breakdown resistance. It did not form a TD9 count bottom. It did form a TD9 count pattern, and that gave us a breakdown level of resistance. So that is at 174.85. So that looks to me like it's prior uh, target area, 174.85 to the upside. I know you've got, I think you've got the calls on this as well. So you'd certainly be looking for a close above that. If we get a close above that on the daily time frame, I don't see any additional resistance, at least not at the moment. So let's switch over to the weekly time frame. The weekly time frame for Nice was a TD9 out bottom for about five weeks ago. Price is trading with inside its bullish structured weekly profile. You closed above the center of that profile on Friday. And that was at 170.12. Uh, well, hold on. I think it is right at 170.12 to be. Nope. It's at 170.05. Steve is wrong about that. We're trading at 170.11 right now. As long as price closed the day above 170.05, you'd have two consecutive closes above the center of a bullish structured profile. And that would then suggest a move up to the 190.52 level. So those are the price targets, uh, resistance at 192.28 to be exact on the weekly time frame. Support on a monthly time frame is down at the 157.74 area. So, Vic, I hope that helped you out with both those instruments. If not, right back, and we'll get you the information you were looking for. Snowball, inside our Tiger's Den, wants to take a look at John Deere. And Snowball doesn't think John Deere is going to do very well. Did I read that right, uh, Snowball? You're wondering, can John Deere get back to 171 buckaroonies? John Deere, folks, if you don't know, is trading out at 366 bucks at the moment. So my question, Snowball, do you know something that I don't know? Just kidding there. I don't know anything. So you got to know something that I don't know. If we take a look at John Deere on the monthly time frame, that's what we're going to open up first out here and see what kind of signals it has. It's really just been trading sideways, quite frankly. Then you're not going to like this since 2021 out there. So it's got a pretty decent sized consolidation here. Let's go take a look at that consolidation. And let's see if Jumbo, uh, who gave us that snowball, was the one that asked us about, I think it was about John Deere, yeah. And uh, so let's go see if price were to break this uh, consolidation, this uh, sideways consolidation. So we'll just start at about the uh, top. I'm not going to worry about being dead on balls accurate. What movie did that come from? Most of you know that. And then here is that sideways consolidation. So when price breaks a consolidation, should this ever break a consolidation? But first, I would tell you, if John Deere is headed lower, it'll head towards the bottom of that consolidation, 289.15. Now, if price were to break through that consolidation pattern, and then we come down here, then what would we be looking at? We'd be looking at a move not to 170, but to 132. So right now, the monthly chart says, yeah, I don't see that. Uh, happening, but not that it can't happen, just that the monthly chart doesn't see that happening. What's the weekly chart show us when we take a look at John Deere? It shows that it has support, key support, that's been tested several times since that be actually formed. It actually formed on the trading day of August 4th, and that support level for you to watch is going to be 361.80. So what you and I know is you've got support at 361.80, TD9 count breakout support, and you have profile support at 359.32. If price were to close below 359.32, uh, 32, that would suggest lower price. But if we really take a look at it, the price level that John Deere on a weekly basis needs to close below would be the B point of a potential A to B equals CD pattern to the downside. And where I hear the music in the background. You know what that means? That means we're going to go to a break. So why don't you as well put in that A to B equals CD pattern on the weekly time frame chart? Let's just simply compare notes if we come back from this break. Steve Rhodes, we'll see you in a minute. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Keckstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits.
the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction.com. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. So we're taking a look at the uh, chart here for John Deere. We've identified support levels, but the real area here to watch that wave seven bottom, that's courtesy of the Chapman wave that uh, formed out here on February 23rd out there. And if price takes out that low, that low being specifically 353.15, and if it does with more than 7.2 million shares, then you would have a confirmed A to B equals CD pattern to the downside. This is the weekly chart we're looking at, and that will get us to the 320 area out there. So that's, uh, that, you know, by saying that that's going to happen, no, price has got to break through these support levels in the weekly buy zone between 359.32 and 365.48 out there. So that's what I see on the weekly time frame. The daily time frame out here is a TD9 count bottom. And price right now is testing that swing point. So this is going to assist you in that the swing point was formed out here. The TD9 count bottom swing point was on May 29th. The volume there was 1.6 million shares. So far today, in just a little over two hours of trading, we are at 304,000 shares. If we just multiply that times three, that gets us up to about 900,000 shares. So lighter volume, quite frankly. Now, if price today, uh, Snowball, goes ahead and rejects that swing point, because it will be with lighter volume, and a rejection would be a close back above 367.85 at day's end, you'll have a test and rejection of a swing point with lighter volume. If you can't bust them down, as you know, OB1, the like to say, price will try to bust them up. So where's trying to bust it up? Between 378.28 and 382.43. Likewise, if price takes out and closes below that TD9 count bottom, you'll have a daily A to B equals CD pattern to the downside. But your question was, do I see this getting to 171? I don't see that anytime soon out there. And I don't see that really anytime even in the intermediate term time frame. But anything, of course, can happen in markets out there. We had a request uh, by Mr. Z to take a look at gold. Do we have any indications of what gold might be doing here? Um, you know, going into the uh, trading holiday, my inclination is it wants to just trade sideways, but I'd like to really put up the charts on the screen. Now, that would help me. If we take a look at gold on a daily time frame, we talk about consolidations. Look at what uh, Goldilocks has been doing here. It's been trading in a sideways consolidation. Quite frankly, it's been doing that since uh, April the 3rd out there. So support on the consolidation is right around, don't quote me right to the penny, but it's right around the 2304 level out there. Uh, price has resistance here, John, at its oscillator and change line. So even though we had that really nice rally back on June 27th, there a next day we had a little bit of upside potential. But by day's end, it found resistance at that oscillator and change line. 
If price can close above that, 23.40.60, that is, then we're going to go test resistance at 23.59. No idea whether we break through that resistance level. But, John, if we did close above 23.59, then I would be inclined to say that price should go target the top of that consolidation towards that 24.70 type area out there. That's what I see when I take a look at Goldilocks. On an intraday basis, you do have a TD9 count top for the four-hour time frame. So if price is going to move higher out there, price must take out that high. And that high was uh, established at 10 o'clock on June 28th, and that high being 23.50.60. So I'd watch that level as well. If price closes above that, that, quite frankly, would trigger a small A to B equal CD pattern to the upside. That's what I see when I take a look at Goldilocks. The next question was to take a look at the 30-year Treasury as well as TLT for who wanted TLT? Jim Belay, I think, wanted TLT. So let's go first down, take a look at those 30-year treasuries. I believe the question was, is this going to find a bottom anytime soon out there? So let's take a look at those 30-year treasuries and see what we see. Right now, Jim, we've got to sell the D-point pattern. We've talked about that sell the D-point pattern in the 11 a.m. update for you know at least a week now out there because that was formed on the trading day of June 17th. It was that bear sash candle that confirmed that pattern. That set resistance up at the high of the pattern, which was the prior day. So resistance out here is at 120.24. We take a look at what uh, the 30-year, so it has to sell the D-point pattern. What the 30-year bond is doing right now, it's traded back to the level where if this is only a counter trend move to the downside, I don't know if it is, but if you were to ask me, Steve-O, where would a counter trend move to the downside end? I would say that would be at 116.02. So you want to watch that 116.02 level. Why? Because if price closes below that, that tells us this is more than a counter trend rally. You want to look, take a look at not intraday, where it closes. And so, John, you were asking about the 30 year Treasury. Right now, this is at the spot where if this is only a counter trend move, we would see price, in essence, kind of stop right here and start rallying. If this is more than a counter trend move, then price should go target the bottom of its profile, and that's right at about the 114.31 level out there, and that's the daily time frame. Real quickly, do we see anything else? So because we're at or near a potential bottom where the counter trend rally would end, do we see any bottoming signals? We were seeing some of the bottoming signals. The one that remains is going to be the 60-minute chart. So, John, I would pay attention to the 60-minute chart, which completes a TD9 count bottom at 12 noon. So if this is going to rally, which the 60-minute uh, chart should rally, the TD9 count should. So the other cool thing about that uh, for both uh, Jambalaya and you, John, is if price closes below of this uh, TD9 count pattern, which right now that low is at 116.02. We trade below that. That will become the number out there that if price closes below on the next 60-minute chart, then that definitely tells us we're headed lower. However, in the midterm time right now, this suggests that we should see a rally. And that rally should take us up towards the 116.21 level. So that's short term. So you've got the numbers to be paying attention to, I think, to help guide us as to what the intent would be for the rest of the week out there. And I hope that that information helped. Now, if we go take a look at the TLT. I certainly want to do that. Uh, Jambalaya asked about that. But we're probably going to not be able to give you that uh, that specific that type of specific information because the 30-year treasury is primarily even though the TLT is more the 20 year and we're taking a look at a 30 year out there this is really the driving force behind that so I, you know I, I, now let's go ahead and pull up the TLT where did Stevie put that is it here no that was John Deere which we've already looked at but let's go see if we got the TLT no that wasn't it son of a gun all right I think it's right here Yep, third time is a term. So on the TLT, if we're to try to look for support, I don't have a TD9 count pattern. See, the 30-year did. Uh, we're below profiles in the uh, daily TLT. Remember, on the 30-year treasury, we got back to a level of, of support, what could be support. In other words, where a counter trend move would find support. So really, if you're going to trade the TLT, my best recommendation is you don't have to trade the, the future contract, but get access to it. And take a look at the patterns that are going on there. I do believe that that would go ahead and uh, improve one's read on the market. Now, if we take a look at the weekly time frame chart, the weekly time frame chart for TLT says we have just rallied or just moved back to where a counter trend move should find support. So that number, 
specifically is at 89.94 out there. I'd still rely on the 30 year, not necessarily this. But if price closes below that area to, uh, this week out there, that says this is more than a counter trend move and where price could or should find support would be at 88.21 out there. If price moves below 88.21, then we're looking at 87.71 and 85.07. So I wouldn't say that this is completely falling out of bed out there. You do have support as we took a look at on the 30-year Treasury as well as on the TLT. Let's go take a look at Oscar out here for Marvin, OSCR. And uh, Marvin is asking, is there a bottom? There is a no. I don't see that bottom just yet. Now, today's going to become bar number eight. I see an A to B equals CD pad. Let me see what the volume looked like. 5.4 million shares was taken out on Friday with 17 million shares. No bottom. You've got a confirmed A to B equals CD pattern to the downside, Marvin. Looks like this wants to head lower. I'll figure that out when we go to this break. Then we come back. We'll take a look at Amazon, I believe, to uh, close out the show. See you both at TFNN. Right now. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly Gold Report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers whether through charts or videos larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets you can sign up now at tfnn.com for just 97 dollars and with all tfnn newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee you have nothing to risk for all the details visit tfnn.com you'll find fibonacci 24 7 right under the newsletters tab are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back. So the A to B equals CD pattern to the downside inside of Oscar out here, Marvin. The A, the one to one is at fourteen eighty eight. So we're not that far away from it. If price gets down towards that fourteen eighty eight level and you see some type of bullish reversal candle, that would form a buy the D point pattern. A weekly chart. Price right now is trading with inside a uh, 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 its profile support at fourteen thirty six. Resists up at sixteen thirty eight. The same thing inside the monthly time frame chart. 
1228 to 1414 is its buy zone. I suspect that price is likely targeting that 1414 level. So I hope that helps you out with regard to Oscar. Your question was, has this bottom? The answer is absolutely not. It has not. Let's go take a look at the last request out here. That is Amazon. We take a look at Amazon. The question here from Duncan Steve is, what direction is this likely to head to? The weekly chart says it wants to head higher. Why? It closed above its green oscillator and change line. Last week, we're trading above it now. We're trading above that on the uh, monthly time frame chart as well. That suggests that we move higher. So what's the daily doing? I don't know. Maybe the daily is just going to pull back the test support at 190.92 out there and then move higher. But quite frankly, it is, a, well, it has a sell the D point top. Okay. So I see that. Uh, last uh, Friday's uh, uh, candle was a bear sash candle. So that would actually say that this pullback's at least a test support, 190.92, and then it likely takes off from there. So that would be my call on Amazon, Steve. Oh, I don't see anything else. Uh, that is out here. So I don't have any other questions. So that's a beautiful thing. We got through all of that. Um, I got to see Larry Carlton again this weekend. Really small venue. I mean, I don't think it holds more than 100 people. I'd be surprised if it holds 100 people. Those of you might say, who's Larry Carlton? You may not know him, but I guarantee you know his music. He was with the Crusaders for like 10 years, Steely Dan. You know some of his wonderful songs. Uh, out there with Steely Dan. Um, he was with uh, Foreplay, right? Bob James and uh, uh, and others out there. Actually, it was Three Play, and he joined it. He became Foreplay out there. And, um, and then his own music out there. He's amazing. Oh, yeah. Well, I'll tell you, Mr. Bill, he's got Parkinson's. And, uh, I mean, I, we, I, we're right there with him. And uh, But when he is playing, the Parkinson's goes away. So that's why he's still touring at this age. And his son was with him, bass player out there. And it was really great. Folks, have a marvelous Monday. I'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow on Terrific Tuesday. Take care.